Hey everybody, back working on the Mustang. Uh, tonight I'm going to make a bracket to mount the driver's side fender uh, to the top of the car near the door uh, hinge. Uh, there's this little bracket, this one is from the passenger side and this car, the one that was on the driver's side was lost and it didn't have one when we disassembled it. So um, instead of buying one, I, you know, I'd rather have it now. I'm just going to make one out of some, uh, some flat bar here. I got some eighth inch thick, uh, inch and a quarter wide steel. And it's about the same size as this one I took off of the passenger side. This eighth inch is a little bit thicker, but that's okay. Um, the only issue that I have with this bracket is they are, uh, it's not identical from side to side. It's, you know, they're a mirror image. So I have to make the bracket the reverse of the one that I have from the passenger side. Anyway, uh, the first step, like I said, is going to be to bend the end of this flat bar to put this little angle, this return angle on it uh, that goes up against the side of the car. And even though this is a mirror image, this the angle doesn't change. You know, you just flip it around upside down, turn it the other way. So the bottom line is we don't have to make this um, line go in the other direction. You know, when the part goes on the car on the driver's side, it's, it's going to go on like this. If we were sitting in the car, this is how the part would be mounted. So the angle is correct. Um, we just need to get the, the piece bent. So I just traced that line with a Sharpie. And now I will clamp it up in the vise and use the full length of this strip as leverage to help me bend that little angle in here. Okay, so I have the uh, piece clamped up in the vise. Uh, the other thing that I did was I just made a little cardboard uh, template. You know, it, it's important to realize that because these pieces are mirror images, you know, they have to uh, be the inverse of each other in everything. So just to make sure that I do this right, um, I made this little cardboard piece. You can see I put it th if I put it like this. If I was to pull the piece towards me to bend it, I would have it, it would lay over like that, and but that would be wrong. So if I turn this around and put it like this and then lay it over, that's what I want it to, to look like when it comes out so that it's going off in this direction up so that it ends up like that. So I need to bend it away from me. So always make yourself a little... Uh, little template, little cardboard model or something if you know you're not doing these things identical to what they are. They're doing it we're doing it opposite. Alright. And that's it. So if I match this up to the other piece be able to have the same line on it, which it does. It's pretty good. Okay, so now what I can do is I can just cut this off to the right height, but we'll do that later. And I think the next step that I want to do is to put this other bend in it before I actually cut it. Uh, what I have to do now is mark the position where this next bend starts. And so again, these are mirror images, so you know they don't nest one on top of the other. Uh, they're opposites. But you can see that the bend is parallel to this inside corner. So all I'm going to do to measure that is uh, I'm going to take a piece of cardboard, I'm going to put it on that bend, and then fold it here so that it's the correct width. And you know, I don't think this location of where this bend is is super... Uh, critical, but you know, I'm going to try and make it match up. It's the easiest way to do it. So I will draw this line again. And this line is just parallel to this inside corner. Just making sure I get it at the right distance away. So now we'll put this back into the vise and bend it. And it's not a very steep angle, as you can see coming off of the table here. It's pretty shallow. So it won't take much of a bend. And the bend... You know, it's the same 
uh, direction as this first bend. So I'm not going to do it backwards. So let me clamp it up in the vise and I'll bend it again. All right, so the next step uh, is to measure where this hole is on the original piece. All right, so now that I have the center of the hole marked, uh, oops, the last thing I want to do is just mark it for length. And in order to do that, I can use this uh, old piece that we have. I'll just lay it in the top there. And I'll draw a line here. I'll make it, a, you know, I'll make it a little bit longer. Here we are, bolted on to the car. I mean, this thing is like it's solid as a rock. You could, you could probably, uh, you know, hang a 500-pound uh, weight off the side of this thing. It's not moving anywhere. So I think what I'll do is I'll just cut this top corner off so it's not sharp and I don't poke a hole in the fender. But the next step will be to put the fender on and open up the door and see where we need to trim this thing or drill a hole in it so that we can bolt the fender to the bracket. All right, so here's where we are. I've taken this fender on and off about, I don't know, at least six or seven times. And I had to, you know, cut a little bit on the bracket, grind a little bit on the bracket. Then I realized I really needed to bend the bracket more towards the front of the car. So I bent it and then the fender really started to go on better. So um, I'm going to zoom in and show you how the fender and the bracket fit up to one another. All right, so here it is. You're looking at, uh, there's a tab with a hole in it on the fender, and you put a bolt through that tab, and then it goes into a hole in the bracket that has a nut clip on it. And I don't know if you can see from this angle, but I actually wound up uh, maybe cutting the bracket down a little too much. I made it a little too short at the top. I'm going to see if I can get a hole in it and a nut clip um, on it. Or even maybe just weld a nut onto the back of it. All right, there it is. You can see. Whoops. You can see I have the little dot right in the middle of the hole. So now I'll take the fender off one more time and see uh, when I make a hole in this piece if um, if I'm too close to the edge. You know, I, I do have a tap, so maybe I'll just tap it and uh, we'll use it that way. So let's see what happens. So there it is, you can see the dot, it's pretty close to the top of the little bracket. So I'm not sure I'm going to be too successful in making a hole in there for the bolt to go in without breaking through the edge. But let's give it a try. Here's the hole that I drilled. It didn't come out too bad. There's enough of the uh, part around the outside of the hole to hold a thread. So I'm going to tap this thing and then put it back on the car and see if it'll fit up. Okay, so here it is up close. You can see the chips on the edge of the tap. And here it is from the other side. I don't know if you can read that. It's 5 16 18 threads per inch uh, pitch, thread pitch. So I'll just clean these chips off the front of the tap and then back it out. And we should be able to uh, put this on the car and have it, the bolt go right into the hole. All right, I took the fender off one more time. And... You can see this is the underside of the fender that you're looking at. And I got you kind of zoomed in. There's the front end of the fender. I got it laying down on the on the floor in the garage here. Got some boxes actually. Anyway, um, what I'm trying to show you is here is the the bracket that the bolt goes into that is attaching to the bracket that we bolted to the car. But right behind that bracket and uh or some scratches here on the inside of the fender. I'm having a little bit of trouble getting the fender to go exactly where I want it to go. And I think the reason for that is, there's the bracket. I think this edge of the bracket is um, pushing on the fender. So I'm gonna cut this edge off. I don't need it. You know, I'll leave enough of the bracket there so that you know, the hole you know, we'll develop the thread. I think the thread's stripped too. I'm going to check that out. I might want to weld the nut onto the back. So the hole in this little bracket is stripped, the hole that I tapped. I put the bolt in uh, with the fender on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld the nut onto the back side. So I just have a bolt through there with the nut. And now I'll weld the nut on. And that will position the nut properly in the hole. And I've drilled the hole out 
so that those um, remaining badly threaded parts are no longer there. I actually opened it up a little bit wider too, so the bolt will be able to go right into the nut. All right, so I've been playing with this for a few minutes, and one improvement that I decided to make was to add this kind of Z-shaped bend into the uh, bracket. So you can see it used to come just out on an angle, like, you know, sort of straight out like this. So what I do is I bent it out more forward, and then I put another kink into it and bent that back so that it's more, the nut is now uh, more parallel to the bracket in the fender. And what that does is it helps when I try and install this bolt, it goes straight into the hole instead of trying to go in on an angle. So uh, I'll give you a shot of what it looks like when the fender is installed but before I put the bolt in. Okay, so here you can see how nice the hole in the bracket lines up with the flange on the fender. So I'm glad I bent it like that. Alright, so just to put... Uh, a conclusion to it. Here's how the fender and the door line up now. I'm really happy with it. I got that body line dead on, I would say. You know, it's not 100% uh, perfect all along the length of the car, but at least this big thing that's, you know, going to be very noticeable it looks really good. So I'm, I'm happy with it. You know, considering all of the issues that we have with this car, you know, all the damage that uh, it's sustained in the past i'm really pleased with how it's coming out so thanks for watching keep coming back and we'll be working on the mustang